We start our study of motion in physics with the study of motion in a single dimension. But we know that we can apply many of those same concept, concepts to motion in two or even three dimensions. Using what we learned about vectors, we can express the position vector in unit vector notation, and we use the symbol r for that position vector. We can express it using i hat, j hat, and k hat notation, showing where an object is located in a three-dimensional space. Similarly, we could write the velocity, the average velocity is the change in that position vector divided by time, or the instantaneous velocity as the derivative of the position vector with respect to time. We could analyze the entire vector at one time, which is typically what we'll do when we have unit vector notation, or we could look at just one component, focusing only on the x components, only on the y components, or only on the z components if they exist. If we were doing it just based on those components, we could say that the x component of the instantaneous velocity is the derivative of the x position with respect to time, and likewise with the y and z components. A special scenario of, multiple, of um, applying kinematics to multiple directions is something called projectile motion. A projectile is an object that has a velocity in both the x and y directions. And it's easiest to analyze the motion of this object treating the x and y directions separately. The x direction follows the constant velocity model because we know that there are no forces uh, with x components acting on our projectile, assuming that we are ignoring air resistance. And the y direction follows a constant acceleration model, where that acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, or negative 9.8 meters per second squared. When you're analyzing projectile motion problems, there are some hints or kind of tricks and things to remember that can help you out if you get stuck. For example, if your initial velocity is given to you, one of the first things you should do is split that initial velocity up into x and y components. Pay attention to the direction of the y component. If that projectile is shot upward at an angle, that y component will be positive. If the uh, projectile is shot horizontally, the y component is zero. And if it's shot downward at an angle, that y component of the initial velocity is negative. Another thing to remember is that the y component of the velocity will be zero at that maximum height of the projectile. This does not mean that the total velocity is zero at this location, since the x component of the velocity is constant. And if you have a total y displacement of zero, so in other words, it begins and ends at the same height, then the time that it takes for your projectile to reach its maximum height is half the total time, and that maximum height occurs at a horizontal position that is half of the total position.